Seeing is believing. I've known so many people who have basically, that's been their credo. You show me that God exists and then I'll believe. But there seems to be a misnomer in that because I don't think that that actually does make a difference. Now, in many things, when someone has seen something, well, yeah, it's going to change their heart. But let's face it, for the majority of believers, for those who say they believe in Jesus Christ, they really haven't seen per se. So let's think this through for a second. What are we talking about? Now, you know people out there. There are people out there that are convinced by something. You know, like we're not allowed to call them pyramid schemes anymore, but those old pyramid schemes are now called multi-level marketing or something like that. It's a nicer way to say it so it doesn't sound like it's like they're trying to sell you something, but they are. And what would they do? Like, you know, those old Tupperware things or whatever. They'd come in and they'd put the thing in front of you and you'd see it with your own eyes and you get to touch it and play with it. And, and that's, that's how they sold. You know, they, yeah, you saw it. Isn't it great? Isn't it the best thing ever? And so you wanted to buy 50 of them and all of a sudden, like, you know, you got a house full of Tupperware and you don't have anything to put in it. Because, well, anyhow. But think, think about it. That, that's, that's the theory behind the way some people approach faith the way some people approach Catholicism. If you see, you will believe. But I'm going to say, if you believe, you will see. I want that to percolate for a second, because for so many of us sitting here right now, I'm going to say that there's nobody really that is going to make a claim to me that you had a vision of Jesus, he spoke to you, and you're now a mystic and you can reveal to the world Jesus's divine mysteries. I'm going to think that that's a pretty safe bet. I'm going to say for the most part, if not for all, none of you have seen someone cast a demon out of somebody else. You haven't seen your Lord and Savior walking to you on the water. Remember last week, St. Peter gets out of the boat. But what happened to poor St. Peter? He faltered. Have any of you had that opportunity to be called out of your boat and walk on the water? Now, of course, we realize that not only is there a physical miracle that happened, but Jesus is up to something. Now, look at the contrast. What was St. Peter's problem? What was his problem? Jesus says it right out. Your faith is weak. Your faith is weak. You wanted to see to believe, and even when you did see, you didn't believe. And think of St. Peter. We're, we're well into Matthew's gospel. He's seen Jesus healing. He's raising the dead. He's doing all of these miracles. And Peter somehow still faltered. Somehow the future pope still faltered. Think about that for a second. Seeing doesn't necessarily guarantee faith. It, it can help a little bit. But from my experience with a lot of people I've known that have seen great things, they've, they've been places around the world where there's miraculous happenings and they've, they've touched things that are holy, that are like, you know, incredible. And they come back and they're still kind of lukewarm. St. Peter had that problem that Jesus tells us in the book of Revelation is the one that bothers him the most. You can't be sitting on the fence, St. Peter. You can't, you can't just be like having your loyalties divided. Either you are or you aren't. And so, yes, here today, I am here to say to you, you have to believe with a deep faith. See, good old St. Peter, he faltered last week. What happened today? This is such, such a beautiful story. It's such a beautiful story. This woman did not see, but believed. Her faith, as Jesus tells us, was great. Contrast that to St. Peter. She never saw, she never experienced, she just knew that this Jesus was coming and that there's something about him that she heard and that was sufficient for her. But if any one of you right now walked up to me after Mass and said, you know, Father, I need you to pray for me, I'm going to say, and I say to you, I'm sorry, I don't pray for pagans like you. I mean, that's how strong his words were. He said, we don't throw the, the food to the dogs. He called her a dog. He, he said to her, you're not worthy of this. Could you imagine? 
Could you, first off, could you imagine the cover of Newsday the next day? Priest rebukes parishioner. You know, it, forget about it. I'd be, I'd be dragged over the coals for being so crude and so rude. But he said those words and she persisted. That is faith. She persisted. She didn't quit. She didn't give up. I, let's face it, if any one of you were treated like that, you'd walk away in a huff. You, you think, think about it, you'd walk away. Who is this guy? Who does he think he is calling me a dog? I'm out of here. I've had this. I don't need to be treated that way. Or, like she really did, no, I know who you are. I know you can do this. I believe. I don't have to see to believe. I know who you are. And she believed. And look what happened. Her daughter was healed. So many of us, I think Catholics today, I think one of the biggest problems that we have in Catholicism today is we say we believe, we say we have faith, but it's only half-hearted. I only like this part of Catholicism. I only like this part of believing. I only want to believe this far. But then after that, now you're asking too much. You're pushing too hard. I, you know, like, I, I, I don't believe that every time a baby is killed in the womb, it's wrong. There are some times when it's justifiable. No, evil is evil. It's always going to be evil. Killing is always killing. It's always going to be killing. If we can't buy into truth, goodness, love, if we can't fully believe, well, then no, the miracles aren't going to happen. We hold back, don't we? I, I can admit it. I've done it. I can admit it. There, public confession. I said it. I have held back from God. There are times when I really wanted to believe. There have been parts in my life when I really wanted, just like God, just prove to me. Just prove to me right now. And he's proved it to me in so many different ways, and I still said that. Seeing does not guarantee believing, but believing can guarantee seeing. And so we need today a revival in the Catholic faith. We need the Catholics. You who are sitting here, you, you want to be here. Nobody twisted your arm. Nobody held a gun to your head to be here this morning. You are the ones that have to go forth from here believing. And you have to be strong and ardent believers because, let's face it, the world is not crawling to our doors like they used to. They're not going to come knocking on the, the church doors here and say, let me in, let me in. <laughs> They're not even going to get to the doors close enough to even say anything to us. But guess what? You go out, you walk through these neighborhoods, you have neighbors, you have people you see all the time. There's people that you pass all the time. Do they see a miracle in you? You want them to believe, they have to see. They want to see, but you have to believe. It's a real juxtaposition here, I think, where we're at, at the, at the crossroads of Catholicism today. At the crossroads, because we are truly at a crossroads. We need on fire Catholics. We need people so convicted, so convinced, so into the faith, that there's no doubt in anybody's mind when they meet them, this person loves Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to go back to what I was, I've said before, and I'm going to say it again. The woman who approached Jesus had faith, but she didn't approach him asking him, what are the rules of the church before I ask you for a favor? What is that, you know, what, what's going to be the quid pro quo here, Lord? What, you know, are you going to make me do certain things? Are you going to make me say certain things? No. What came first? A relationship. Faith is a relationship. Belief is built on a relationship and a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Do you have that personal relationship? That's the question. Do you really have a relationship with Jesus Christ or is it just you go through the motions? You, you, just, you know, all right, I show up at church, I say my rosary, boom, I'm done. I, I, I'm a good Catholic. I did what I had to do. I'm done. Or is it like, Oh, Jesus, in every particular moment of my day, I want you to be part of it. Oh, Lord, as I walk down this street, be with me right now, Lord. Be my partner. Be my love. Be my all. But if he's to be my all, I have to be his all. 
We're going to be challenged by that question in the coming weeks. Who do you say Jesus is? That's the, that's the toughest question that we ever ask. Who do you say he is? Because if you answer it honestly, I love, I love then Father Barron, now Bishop Barron, when he did the Catholicism series, and I've heard him give this talk at other times. If you answer that question honestly, and you say he's Lord and Savior, then your life has to be radically different. Your life has to be completely different. You can't say he's the Lord, he's the Son of God, and continue living like a secular human being. One foot in, one foot out. You know, I like these pleasures. I like doing these things. But I also do like going to church because I want to like hedge my bets. I've had people say that to me. I'm just hedging my bets. You know, I, I'm going to believe a little bit. But, you know, just in case this is real, just in case he really does exist. No. It's a relationship. And you know as well as I do, any relationship into which you don't invest yourself, what happens? Any spouse that, you know, kind of blows off their spouse all the time, is always out hanging out with their friends and doing all that, how is that relationship going to end? Anybody who's always yelling at the other or getting upset with the other, always asking the other for something all the time and never giving back, how is that going to end? This woman was lauded for her faith by Jesus Christ himself. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't it be nice if you turned out to Jesus and you asked him and said, Lord, I need this miracle. I, I need you to be there for me. I know you love me. I love you. And then he looks at you and he says, your faith is great. Wouldn't those be sweet words to hear from your Lord and Savior? Because at judgment, that's what you want him to say. At judgment, that's what you want to hear when you approach him in judgment. At that moment when you go before him at the pearly gates, hopefully, 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 when you get there, he's going to look at you and say, my faithful servant, my beautiful person, the one who never needed proof, but always loved, enter my kingdom. Because for the rest, you know where they're going to end up. The half-hearted don't get in. He made that clear. Those who don't believe aren't going to walk through. And I don't want to see anybody go through that. And that's why we need to be good evangelists. That's why we need to be better at sharing the good news. That's why we need to be like all of those people who love somebody. They let the whole world know. Just your little part. Just those one or two people. Be the miracle for them. Be that miracle. Be that presence for them of Jesus Christ. He loves you and you love him. Now let that love be known. You don't have to see to believe, but I guarantee you if you believe, you will see miracles. And who doesn't want to see miracles? But it starts like this woman. I don't care how much you push me away, I will never ever be pushed away from Jesus Christ. And she wasn't. And she was rewarded. God love you.